Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here on that brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Take a go out today, see who things came out, see who things are on sale today. Today though, new release wise, some of the big things that release is uh, Angry Birds the Movie 2. That one comes out and with that one exclusive wise, I believe Target has one that comes with a book. I'm not sure though if there's uh, any other exclusives though, if there's one at Best Buy or Walmart with that one. Also though, the film uh, Good Boys, that releases as well as uh, 47 Meters Down, Uncaged. Also uh, the Peanut Butter Falcon comes out today as well as a uh, farewell so there's a number of different things today uh, also though at the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD blu-ray and 4k reviews some really really cool uh, ones at the end of this video so definitely stay tuned for those ones and as always too uh, you know let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs blu-rays and 4ks that are reviewed if you guys have seen them you know what you thought of them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Target we go well, it's looking like Target does what it does a lot when the things aren't changed out because it's like stuff from last week like Hobbs and Shaw and Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark in the kitchen. But we'll look in the actual section to see if they changed anything out yet. You know, fingers crossed they did. But like I said, a lot of times that happens in Target. So I have a feeling it might all be the same, but we shall see. Yeah, I went over to the actual section and it was, you know, all the same stuff. Nothing was changed out. Yeah, every time I come to Target, like so often, like I said, they don't change the things out till like later in the day. And sometimes I've come the following day and they still didn't. But it's kind of like I almost get like thinking like, did I really screw up? And I went out like on a Monday and I'm like totally like confused. You know, like I always feel like that coming in Target because it's, you know, always like that for some reason. But we'll probably go to another Target later though, just because like, like I said, I believe they have an exclusive for the Angry Birds movie too. So we shall see. But like I said, I'll probably go to, um, you know, one after I go to uh, Walmart next. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, so in here though, like I was saying, some of the big things that released today was uh, Good Boys. And that one's uh, $22.96 for the Blu-ray and $17.96 for the DVD. I thought this was a funny movie. It's just basically about like, kind of like a um, super bad kind of film, but with like middle school kids that are like everything that can go wrong, wrong goes wrong in one day. And like they have, the one loses their dad's drone. They have to get it back from these girls. And it's like them trying to get alcohol to go to this party. It's like all sorts of kind of problems and stuff. It was actually a really, really funny fun movie. Other than that in here though, uh, Peanut Butter Falcon released today. That's $17.96 for the Blu-ray and then $12.96 for the DVD. This is one I would highly recommend you guys check this one out. Really, really love this movie. I would say this is probably one of my top favorite movies this year for sure. One I really would recommend you guys check out. You know, it stars Sh Shia LaBeouf and Dakota Johnson. It's basically about this, this kid who is in a... Um, old folks home that he has down syndrome it lives in an old folks home because he has no family to take care of him so he's living there and he ends up um, running away because he wants to go to this wrestling school you know to see this character played by Thomas Hayden Church and it's kind of him on this journey and he comes across Shia LaBeouf along the way and he's running away from some of his own problems and Dakota Johnson works at the old folks home and she's trying to track him down but it is a really really good movie one I would like, like an absolute must watch uh, for Angry Birds though they do have a double pack here that's an exclusive a Walmart exclusive for $19.96 but including so for a DVD, DVD version though but includes the original film as well as the new one I haven't seen the new one I thought the original was was decent movie didn't absolutely love it though um, they do have you know for the blu-ray one that one's $19.96 for the blu-ray and then the 4k is $24.96 also though um, the, the, the final season of the Big Bang Theory that one released today on blu-ray and that one's uh, $34.96 as well as it is, um, you know, uh, tw twenty, uh, you know, yeah, thirty-four ninety-six for the Blu-ray, twenty-nine ninety-six for the DVD. But I'm also going to be doing a review of the complete series at the end of this video, so definitely stay tuned for that. But they also they have their own collections here, like uh, Big Bang Theory season one through five, and season seven through twelve. And the one through five uh, DVD one is fifty-four ninety-six, and it's sixty-nine ninety-six for the seasons seven through twelve. But other than that, though, they don't seem to have um, 47 Meters Down 2. I'm not seeing that one. And there was one movie today that was supposed to come out called Polaroid, which is, um, I was that's not one I was one, one I would normally pick up, but I already, you know, got a number of months back the German Blu-ray of that one because there's a Blu-ray of it that's region free. But I was pretty sure they were going to have that in here, but I'm, I'm not seeing a spot for it in the front or anything. But yeah, like that's one, one of the ones that I know was today. But like I said, I already have the German uh, Blu-ray of that, which 
which is region free, so I didn't end up picking that one up. But over here, though, let's see if there's anything different. Oh, no, they actually have um, it over here. Polaroid's over here. Like I said, though, I have the German Blu-ray, this one, already. But, you know, so I don't think there's anything different about this cut or anything like that. Um, but, you know, this is one of those movies that was, you know, originally supposed to come out years back, a couple years back, and it was going to have a theatrical release. And there was all sorts of things that happened because of, you know, who the producer was on this movie, you know, Weinstein and all that terrible stuff he did. And because of that, this movie got canceled, but finally, you know, has gotten a release. But it seems like they put some of the new releases over here now. So they have, like, the farewell over here as well as this one here um F frontiers frontiers movie here i don't know anything about this one also though the weekend that was another one that came out today uh, after the wedding that released today uh you know what it's 1296 for the blue the dvd of uh the, of polaroid and they, these this one's 1296 as well they have farewell here the farewell which is another really really good movie uh and that's there's also a blu-ray of that and that's 1496 the weekend's 1296 uh the after the wedding though i'm have a review of the blu-ray of this one at the end of this video that one's uh 1496 also, Cross Rise of the Villains, that was today. That one's uh, $9.96 for that. Some kind of like unicorn adventure thing. I do not know anything about that. That was today as well. Also, though, this one wasn't out in the shelf last week, School of the Damned. I like this one. I did a review of this one last Tuesday if you guys want to see my review of that. And that's, like I said, $9.96 for that. But let's see anything else different over here that I missed. You know, Because there was some of the stuff that wasn't out in the shelf last week. Let's see if there's anything else different. I show I saw all these ones uh, on the shelf. I think Devil's Revenge. I don't believe that was on the shelf last week. That you know when the one store I was at, as well as this one, Plagueers. This one is on 9.96. This is a um, Wild Eye releasing release. But over here, though, one of the other things that came out was uh, season one and two of Cobra Kai. You know, this one now has a physical release. I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. This was, you know, you on YouTube's, you know, premium streaming thing you can get. And also, though, Star uh, Trek Discovery season two. That one's $39.96 uh, for the Blu-ray and then uh, $34.96 for the DVD of that one. Other than that, though, there is another thing today, too. This one, Letter Kenny, Letter Kenny, I believe this one came out today. And I don't know anything at all about this show. If you guys have seen this show, let me know how this one was. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the stuff. But it is funny, though, how a lot of the new releases, instead of all being in the front, are over here now, though. Into the second Target we go. Yeah, well, this location actually changed out all the stuff. So the first thing here, like I said, was Angry Birds. And they do have an exclusive one here, which includes a 24-page activity book with over 30 stickers. So that's their exclusive one. And that one's $22.99 for the exclusive one. And then the, the uh, DVD is $19.99. Uh, Good Boys here is $24.99. And uh, 47 Meters Down on Cage, that one is uh, $19.99. I did not end up seeing that anywhere in Walmart. So I'm not sure if they didn't have that one or this the store hadn't put that one out. Out yet. Uh, also though Big Bang Theory the complete final season here is $36.99 for the Blu-ray and then $32.99 for the DVD but we'll head over to the actual section and see if there's anything else different over there though. And over here, though, in the actual section, though, some of the different things I see is the Peanut Butter Falcon here for $17.99 on Blu-ray. Looks like they only have the DVD of The Farewell for $14.99, as well as uh, this one called Brain Banks. That one's uh, $24.99 for that one. They also have um, the Big Bang Theory, but these ones, they have like exclusive packaging on these ones, so it's, I guess it's different cover on these releases here. And they have the complete series here, The Big Bang Theory for $149.99, that's the DVD edition. And they have Cobra Kai here as well for $19.99. And this past week, I saw a couple of different films in theaters. The first one I saw was the film starring Amelia Clark and Henry Golding. You know, it's directed by Paul Figg called Last Christmas. It's one of those movies, though. I will say, though, um, if you guys want to see it and you're like interested in like looking at like up stuff about it, be really careful because, like, for some reason, it's one of these movies where they're really spoiling something about the movie in like the title of articles so just keep that in mind be really careful because like I, I was said something spoiled which was like a shame I was like I, and I wasn't even trying it just like I was looking up the theater times for the movie and it got spoiled but movie's basically about Amelia Clark's character who works in a um, kind of like an all year long Christmas kind of uh, store and recently she had something happen to her where she was sick 
and she's pretty much working there and kind of like doing some sort of um, destructive things in her life and like not really taking care of herself the way she should. And you know, at the store though, she ends up seeing this guy played by Henry Golding, you know, who was in the movie Crazy Rich Asians and she, you know, meets him and she starts seeing him and he's acting kind of strange though. They kind of see each other at night and then, you know, he kind of disappears at periods of time and kind of won't give his phone number. He's like, oh, I don't have a phone. I don't mess around with all that. And it's basically though about their, their meeting and like what they're doing and it's like I said it's a real I actually really like the movie like I said though just be really careful uh, for spoilers on that one the other one that I saw was the film uh, you know uh, Playing With Fire which stars you know John Cena and uh, you know John Leguizamo was in the movie and it's basically about John uh, like you know uh, John Cena as like the head fire captain of um, this group of all these firefighters that kind of they, they're ones that jump into the fire like drop into fires and you know dump the water on fires and that kind of stuff and they end up rescuing these kids from this house that's on fire and it, they, when they rescue them they're going to take them to the hospital but it's like during this um terrible storm so they can't get them there so they end up taking them back to the firehouse and they all end up like you know wrecking havoc and causing all sorts of problems and it's like a really it's one of those movies you kind of know it's like a ridiculous movie going into it but it was there was some funny stuff and Legozama's character was funny in here like making these weird like spam pancakes all these weird spam food I, I've always been a fan of like John Leguizamo forever so I always liked to love watching stuff that he's in I thought he was really funny in the movie I still have to see Doc or sleep though I'm definitely seeing that you know this you know coming weekend but like in the comments below though let me know you know what you guys saw this past week if you guys got to see anything and you know what you guys thought of them into Best Buy we go well right here in the front yeah it's definitely a different cover on the Big Bang Theories because as opposed to the one that they had in Target but it's $32.99 for the uh, Blu-ray $28.99 for the DVD they still have some of these ones the Scary Stories of Telling the Dark um, Steelbooks there's also an exclusive I didn't know they were having this for Star Trek Discovery here season 2 and that's like a Best Buy exclusive one and that one's $39.99 for that one other than that though let's see they have 47 meters down and cage that's $19.99 here Good Boys is $22.99 here over here though in the actual section though like they have uh, their standard edition of Star Trek Discovery here uh, for $34.99 for the blu-ray and $29.99 for the DVD they did have a the Angry Birds movie 2 in the front I didn't see any exclusives but they also have the farewell here for $17.99 for that one which is a really really good movie really like that one a lot I talked about that one last week uh, peanut butter Falcon the peanut butter Falcon blu-ray here though is a, like a really good price that's only $12.99 here so that's the cheapest price that I've seen that that's a great price for that one uh, you know I talked about that one last week but like I said really love that movie so yeah if you guys want this one that's a great price for that one in here and they also though have some of the Christmas stuff out here now like Jingle All the Way but they actually have a whole thing over here as well of uh, you know uh, all the holiday Christmas hot movies like they have like the newer editions of Santa Claus the ones that have slip covers and this one has been harder to find the, the collection here the Santa Claus collection here that has you know all three of the movies in the in the steelbook here but like I said it's all the uh, you know Christmas holiday movies over here I'm seeing anything like really different that I see like Fred Claus this is one you don't see too often for $7.99 as well as I saw over here what was one of the other ones that I saw it was kind of an interesting one you don't see too often I think that might have been the, the main one that I saw like Grumpy Cat's Christmas only four dollars it's not really a bad price for that but this is another one I love hopefully some point this one gets a blu-ray release Christmas with the Cranks this is one of those ones I watch like pretty much every Christmas I don't know I always really like this movie I thought this was a really like goofy fun movie but other than that though that seems like that's all the main things in here today anyway though guys that's all for my brand new DVD blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today like I always say if you guys enjoy these shopping videos definitely give this video a thumbs up leave me comments below too letting me know you know what you guys picked up on DVD blu-ray or 4k if you guys picked up anything today also let me know as well you know what you guys thought of all the titles that i reviewed at the end of this video if you guys have seen any of them if you guys plan on picking any of them up and also what you guys thought of them also too there's only as of right now there's like less than like 10 hours left if you guys are interested in helping out butcher's bluff so just want to let you guys know less than 10 hours left and you guys can pre-order the movie uh you know all that kind of stuff and posters all kind of different perks for the movie so definitely check out that link below if you haven't got a chance to thanks so much for watching subscribing guys now stay tuned for the brand new
new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video. It's a movie here called Hitchhike to Hell. This is one I had never seen before and really like this one. This is produced by Harry Novak. He produced stuff like The Child and, uh, you know, Toys Are Not for Children. Both those ones were recently released by Arrow Video. He also did stuff like a lot of exploitation movies, things like um, The Pig Keeper's Daughter, uh, lots and lots of different stuff. Uh, Please Don't Eat My Mother, some really fun movies. So it's really cool to see a lot of his, you know, titles that he produced getting released on Blu-ray. Uh, this one, though, is basically, though, about this guy who works for a, um, you know, for a dry cleaning company. And basically, he goes and does deliveries. Like, he picks up dry cleaning, and he ends up delivering dry cleaning that's clean and that kind of stuff. And he's always running late and everything because he's going around and picking up hitchhikers. And basically, though, he picks up, picks up hitchhikers because a number of years before, right, you know, ago, his um, sister had run away from home and was never seen again. And it drove his mother crazy because she was like, you know, so upset that the sister ran away, you know, her daughter ran away and like, like basically was nuts about the whole thing. And because of that, though, anybody that's, you know, uh, you know, hitchhiking, he's like kind of talks to them and says, oh, so uh, are you running away or are you doing this or do you not like your mother? And if anyone says anything bad about their mother, Mother. He goes, snaps and goes crazy and kind of blanks out and then goes and takes them to the side of the road and kills them. And it's basically, though, about, you know, um, the cops trying to track down who is this person because all these bodies are, you know, piling up, you know, around and they're trying to, you know, figure out who it is. And the, you know, the professor, though, is played by, you know, Russell Johnson. You know, I mean, the, the um, you know, Russell Johnson plays the detective in here and he played, you know, the professor in uh, Gilligan's Island. But I really like this movie. There's also, uh, like, this theme that they use in the movie like a number of different times and I was kept on thinking like what is that music from and it took me forever to figure it out and it was like the same music that was used in David Cronenberg's film Rabid because you know in the there was always like in the 70s and 80s there was like um and I, th I think it probably still exists today but there's like library music where it's kind of music that you could use in movies you know license it or like buy the songs to use in horror movies and stuff like that so that's why a lot of horror movies from like the 70s and 80s you sometimes hear like the, some of the same songs if it like sometimes they have a composer doing the music but then every so often there's like a scene that they need to fill in a gap with or something like that so they use like library music but I guess in Rabbit they use library music for most of the movie so that's why that one song that was you know used in Rabbit the one you know one of the main things in there was actually in here but I really like this movie this one has a brand new 2k restoration on here and it has it in two different aspect ratios it looks really really good here also has on here though a um it's a, uh, a the strange cinema of Ivan Bur uh, Berwick, who's the director. Uh, Nightmare USA author Stephen uh, Thrower on Hitchhike to Hell and the career of the director on here, talking about his films. A brand new video essay on here has on here though uh, an interview with the singer Nancy a um, Adams, you know, who did the uh, opening song to the film on here, and also has like some alternate versions of some, of some songs on here as well. There's also a booklet in here which has some pictures, you know, from the film and some stuff about the production and everything, but. This is one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. Really, really like this one a lot. Uh, the next one here is from um, Shout Factory, and this is from their Shout Select line. This is a really, really cool collection here. This is uh, a 15-disc set. This is the 80th anniversary Blu-ray edition here of Abbott and Costello, the complete Universal collection here. So these are all the films that Abbott and Costello did with Universal, because there's a couple different ones that they did I think some were with Warner Brothers. I don't know if it, it, there might have been some with MGM, but there, the, the majority of the movies that they did, though, for the most part, were re pretty much with uh, Universal. And their most known movies were with Universal. And this on here, though, I'm going to go through the movies that are on here, but it has on here some of the new features. It has new interviews on here with Chris Costello, new interview with author and film, film historian Ron Pablamo, author, uh, you know, co author of Abbott and Costello in Hollywood, uh, new interviews on here with film historian James Nabler, uh, as well as nine new commentaries on here. It has um, some other features on here. The world of Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello meet Jerry Seinfeld, which is the comic, uh, you know, ho you know, great host a tribute to the one and only comic team, which is a pretty cool feature on here, which is, you know, I think it aired sometime in the 90s. And it was kind of him doing some stand-up and talking about Abbott and Costello and, like, clips and that kind of stuff on here. Also, like I said, it has some, um, you know, archival commentaries on here, trailers, a 44-page booklet in here. But in the booklet, though, 
it's pretty cool. It has like stuff all about Abbott Costello. It has a list of the movies that are in here. And it also, you know, shows like the poster artwork for the movies that are in here and has like some trivia facts about the films. So it's a really, really cool, you know, very detailed, intricate booklet in here as well. And I'll show you guys though a look though at what films are in these ones. And it has in here, um, you know, it's separated by date, so it's from 1940 to 1942, 1944 to 1949, and then 1950 to 1955. So the first set here has the movies that are on this one is One Night in the Tropics, uh, Buck Privates, Hold That Ghost in the Navy, uh, Keep Them uh, Flying, uh, Ride Them Cowboy, Who Done It, Pardon My Strong, uh, I Ain't Hey. Uh, hit, hit the ice and here's a look to inside at the uh, discs and everything. So this is a really really cool collection if you guys are a fan of Abbott and Costello. Uh, the next one here, you know, like I said this one is 1944 to 1949 and this has Abbott and Costello in society. Here come the co-heads, uh, the naughty 90s, uh, Little Giant, uh, the time of their lives, uh, Buck Privates Come Home, The Wishful World of the Wagon Gap, Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, uh, The Mexican Hayride, uh, Meet Boris Karloff. The, the Universal Monsters ones that they did when they had them, you know, co you know, having the Monsters characters in them were really cool ones. And it also has like their poster artwork as well. And then the last ones here are 1950 to 1955. And this has the Foreign Legion, uh, Abbott and Costello Meet the Invisible Man, uh, uh, Coming uh, Around the Mountain. Abbott and Costello lost in Alaska and then uh, Abbott and Costello go to Mars Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde uh, Key Keystone Cops and Abbott and Costello meet the mummy so like I said a really really cool collection here want to let you guys know that this was available from a shout factory like I said if you guys are a fan of Abbott and Costello really cool to have all the universal ones together here in this set now the next one here is from uh, Lions Gate and I just finished watching this and it's a movie called American Dreamer which stars um, Jim Gaffigan and Rob Robin Jones and Jim Gaffigan you know this one is called American Dreamer like I said and then Jim Gaffigan has been doing a lot more like serious roles lately because he did this film he did um them that follow and he's really good like really I, I think of him for like stand-up comedy and like more comedy roles but like doing drama and like real like serious parts he's really really good and it was really great in this movie this is uh, basically though about his character who drives for like a lift kind of company um, because something had happened and he ended up like losing his job and he just basically is driving Lyft and he's kind of like um he's trying to be nice to people that he's driving around and people really aren't talking to him they're kind of ignoring him they're not giving him good tips or anything like that and the one guy that he meets though he kind of ends up you know working for him driving him around on like his jobs kind of being his personal driver and he you know he knows though Jim Gaffigan's character knows that this guy is doing bad stuff because he's like going after people he's like um you know um, doing crime kind of stuff, um, you know, all, all sorts of bad things are going on. Uh, but Jim Gaffigan, like, kind of is like in a desperate situation though, because he wants to see his son, but he hasn't paid his child support, so he owes all this money for child support. So he basically is like in a situation where he needs to get this money from this guy, so he's going to do like some illegal stuff that this guy is involved in and drive him around and be it kind of it be like if he texts him and says be here, he has to be there then, and it's like that kind of. A situation but he comes up with this idea though to kidnap his son and you know you know hold him for ransom and that's all I can say and it's basically though when Jim Gaffigan's character plans this and it's kind of like it's an absolute nightmare the way it goes but it is really really well done really well acted you know definitely one I would highly recommend you guys check out like I said uh, Jim Gaffigan and Robin Jones both did a really great job in this one and Jim Gaffigan too I really like seeing him doing like I said these dramatic parts he really really is good as a dramatic actor this one has on here though uh, a making of the film on this one the next one here is from Lionsgate as well and this is um the two disc collection here and this is Ancient Aliens season 11 volume 2 this is a show you know that airs on the history channel this is basically though this has nine episodes on here on two discs and if you guys haven't seen the show it's basically kind of all about aliens and kind of like um looking at things that kind of almost like um like this one has ones going like to egypt and talking about like um things with the great pyramid and like how it's kind of like you know looking at things that 
maybe you know aliens could have had an involvement in and kind of like how certain things like with history that things kind of things that could have been like kind of unexplainable maybe could have had a connection to aliens and kind of like diving into it and kind of like it's really really intricate and well put together and like I said it's been on now for 11 seasons so I've watched you know a couple episodes here and there of each of the seasons and it's you know if you guys are interested in you know science fiction and alien and aliens and kind of history and also like I said looking into how maybe Maybe aliens could have connections to certain things and things you wouldn't expect and that kind of stuff. Like I said, this one is definitely worth checking out. You know, if you guys are a fan of the show, and like I said, one of you guys know that this one is available from uh, Lionsgate. And the next one here is from Lionsgate as well. And it's a movie here called uh, Go Fish, which has um, you know voices by I Justine, Mark Hamill, and Ron Perlman. This is about this fish who basically, though, kind of like um, uh, wants to go out and like dreams of kind of doing like something bigger and kind of has like a, you know aspirations of like having like something really doing something really big or helping people and um basically though there is like a um oil rig that is like leaking oil into the ocean and it's kind of gotten on some of the fish and it's kind of this big mystery of you know what has happened like, you know the audience knows from this that it's like this oil rig and mark hamill's character you know, he voices like works in the oil rig and you know basically though you know you know that something is going on it's like leaking incorrectly but this fish though wants to go and try and solve the mystery of what this this is because they don't know because it's like showing up on some of the fish or is getting covered in this oil and it's basically this fish going against the wishes of other fish is saying that you shouldn't be doing this and we don't want you involved in this and kind of trying to get to the bottom of what it is Definitely more for kids, though, but I thought the animation and everything was, you know, really well done on this one. This one has on here, though, a sing-along music video, the Go Fish digital comic book, a Go Fish fish guide, as well as a trailer gallery on this one. And the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers. They sent our free copy of this set to show you guys and let you guys know that this one is available. This is a really cool collection here. And this is the limited edition complete series here, which includes the Blu-ray and then digital copies of the Big Bang Theory here on Blu-ray. And this one has on here, though, you know, all 12 seasons of the show, uh, 279 original broadcast episodes, has nearly 12 hours of extras from all the seasons, plus a bonus disc with exclusive never before seen features. It has, like, which is the Big Bang Theory retrospective, final reflections from the cast and producers, all the stars in the BT uh, universe, the cast and crew highlights from many guest stars, because the show had lots and lots of guest stars throughout the years. Also, it has on here uh, 12 great comedy, 12 years of comedy in um, 24 minutes, which is a collection of the funniest moments from every blockbuster season on here. But I'll show you guys a look inside as well. But if you guys don't know the Big Bang Theory, though, it's basically, though, about, you know, Sheldon Cooper's character, played by, you know, um, Jim Parsons and, you know, uh, Johnny Galecki's character, you know, who is... Um, uh, Leonard, and it's basically though about them, you know, who are living together as roommates, and it's kind of just about like their like um, relationships with the the people that they're dating, and like there's these two guys who are like super geniuses, like super smart, so they're always getting like to arguments about like certain kind of like real like scientific type things, and it's like their characters going to comic stores and all kinds of like it's just a really really fun show, and it was cool too to watch this from the beginning because like you know some of the early episodes because I only saw this show like later into the series, probably like a couple seasons in, so I didn't see some of the really early ones. And it's cool too. That includes digital, you know, copies of these ones as well. But I'm gonna show you guys though a look in here though. It has a you know this uh, intricate book here, which has um, you know the episode guide. So it has in here some pictures from the show, as well as it goes through all the discs and the seasons and everything. So it has like. Um, you know, some stills from the show and then shows, you know, what are the episodes on here and also uh, talks about, you know, as well, um, you know, like the features that are on these ones as well, like the, um, you know, gag reels, set tours, all that kind of stuff. So a really cool, you know, really nice, um, you know, episode guide here. And inside of here, though, which is really cool, is it has a pop out. So when you open it up like this, it pops up and it has the characters popping out here like this. So it's like a pop-up book thing. So this is very cool. And inside, though, here's how it all looks. So it's like season one, uh, disc one and two, season two here. And I like the way that this is designed. And it has really good stills in here as well. Season three, which is, you know, and then season four here. And then um, season five and six. And then season seven and eight. And then uh, season... Uh, you know, 9 and 10, 
and then uh, you know the final one, season 11 and season 12, and then it also has the bonus disc as well here. But this is a really, really well put together set. Really, really fun show. If you guys have never seen this one though, would definitely be one that I recommend you guys check out this show. And like I said, I always really love complete collections. And this one is really, really well put together. I really like the box, the really hard bound box here. Let me show you guys a look though at the back of the box here. And I take this off. Here's what it looks like behind the, um, the you know, where it has the uh, sleeve here, where it has all the stuff that says what on the discs and the features and everything but like i said if you guys have not seen this show really really fun show and like one of those ones i would highly recommend you guys uh, check out like i said that one is from warner brothers the next one here is from warner brothers as well they sent over a free copy of this one as well to let you guys know that this one is available and this is uh steven universe the movie here which is you know basically you know the steven universe series and it's turned into a film here it's 82 minute film and it has a whole bunch of because you know the steven universe had a lot of musical numbers this one has in here though featuring 16 new songs and on here it has the steven universe the movie behind the curtain which is a making of on this one uh, on this one as well but this is a fun you know, uh, this, I've only seen a couple episodes of the show, but this is actually a fun series, though. And this one is basically Steven Universe's character wants to kind of like thinks he's kind of going to be able to not kind of just chill out, but then something is kind of discovered, and there's a, uh, a new character with this new kind of like um, gemstone because it all kind of deals with these like these gemstones is like where the powers come from and it's kind of going to like wreck havoc and cause lots of problems and Steven Universe has to try and save the day again and it's just like a really really fun film like I said one of the guys know that this one was available uh, from Warner Brothers and the next one I got here is from Paramount and it's a show here called Catch 22 this one is produced by George Clooney this one you know originally aired on uh, Hulu is where you could originally see this but this has on here though over an hour of new special features it has like a three-part making of on here it has deleted scenes it has outtakes this is basically, though, about this U.S. Air Squadron, you know, stationed in Italy during World War II. And it's all about, though, the, kind of a, it deals, though, it's like a character piece about, like, their training, kind of what they're going through there, about, like, who is, you know, the person who, you know, starts off with George Clooney's character is like, the one who's, like, you know, their, you know, you, you know, sergeant who's giving them, like, all the orders and giving them training. He's really, like, to the books, like, you have to do this this way and, you know, this. It's like, drop and give me 50 and all that kind of stuff, like, really intense. And it's kind of all about the characters that are there and you know when they you know their personal lives if they leave the base their relationships kind of like um their kind of struggles that they're going through the things that are going on at the base with each other like kind of like just all this kind of stuff it's a really really well done uh, character piece here like i said this one is called catch 22 the next one here is from paramount as well this is uh, dora and the lost city of gold this is you know the live action uh, dora the explorer movie which stars isabel monet and this is basically though about, you know, her character has, you know, always lived out in the jungle with her parents. And she, you know, has been homeschooled by them. And kind of everything she's learned has kind of just been out in the jungle. And, like, by, like, exploring and seeing things out there and all that kind of stuff. And she gets to the point, though, where she's, like, decided that, you know, because one reason or another she has to go to a regular school. And it's like she sort of wants to go at the same time she doesn't exactly want to go. But she ends up going to a regular high school. And she's never been, you know, around, like, this many kids. And she's never really been, she's never been anywhere besides the jungle so it's this kind of fish out of water experience for her to be there but at the same time though something has happened to her parents and these people are kind of coming after her and she, she knows that she has to try and you know rescue her parents so she ends up when she's in a museum the one day her and her friends end up going into this crate and then getting like shipped off to the jungle again and so basically though it kind of has like a tomb raider kind of vibe the movie has that kind of feel to it about her you know with her friends out in the jungle trying to make a make her way to figure out exactly where her parents are and kind of like solve these clues along the way and everything it was actually a really really fun movie here i thought like it was a lot of character actors too that pops up in here like michael pan is in here playing you know um dora's uh, father uh you know even langora even langora is playing you know um you know dora's mother um the one actor he was in lots and lots of stuff i was thinking from from instructions i included you know he's in the film as well kind of helping them along the way but like i said really fun movie it has on here though deleted and extended scenes it has bloopers some featurettes on here but one i would definitely recommend you guys check this one out uh the next one's here from um dread presents from you know epic pictures uh dread presents line it's a movie here called red letter day and they also sent over this cool promotional item here and they actually sent a red letter and i'll show you guys what the red letter is basically the 
though, this neighborhood, they all got sent this red letter in the mail, and it has like a person's face on it, and it says like their name, their address, and all that kind of stuff about them. And it basically says that this person, you know, um, either you kill this person or they will come and kill you. So it's basically it's focusing on this family, this mother and her two kids, or you know, son and daughter, and focusing on them and how they all get these letters. And, um, you know, the mother is kind of thinking this is like a prank, same with the son. The daughter doesn't even want to hear about it. She just tears up the letter, doesn't want to hear anything about it, thinks it's ridiculous. But, you know, of course, though, you find out, you know, very beginning of this movie, that this is a really something that's happening. And these people in the neighborhood are going after each other, and it's, like, intense. And the mother's, like... Um, she fi first finds out in the beginning of this movie, though, that this is true, and she goes, the person on her letter was, you know, her friend that she sees all the time, so she goes over there and realizes that this is a serious thing, and these people are taking this letter to, to heart, and it's basically a survival thing going on with this family, and it's like, the thing I really liked is, about this as well was it has great music. First of all, it's super gory, the, and, but the music, I absolutely love the music. It kind of has a vibe of, like, Danny Elfman's music and, like, stuff like Edward Scissorhands and that kind of stuff, like, big band kind of sounds and everything like really great music like, like amazing music honestly but on here though feature wise it has a filmmaker commentary on here it has a making of documentary I think it's like 45 minutes long it also has trailers for other uh, Dread Presents releases they also sent to this fun promo um, thing as well which is a little button of because the characters in this they have these masks and this is a you know a button of the masks in the movie uh, the next one here is from Dread Presents as well from Epic Pictures and this is a really cool new uh, Steelbook release, a Steelbook edition here of the film Terrifier. And this one has in here a Blu-ray and a DVD of the uh, film here. It also includes a poster, a, a mini poster of the, um, you know, the artwork that is on the, uh, you know, the front of the Steelbook. This is a really great slasher movie. Uh, if you guys have not seen this one, this is an absolute must-watch as well. This is basically though about this crazy, you know, killer clown. And they're actually making the sequel to this one right now, which I cannot wait to see the sequel because I know Felissa Rose is in the movie. Looks like it should be really cool. This is basically, like I said, about this crazy clown, and it's, he like, targets these two girls. The one kind of wanders in away, and the one friend is trying to find her, and it's in this like kind of um, apartment complex, and it's kind of all what's going on in there, and it's like super insane gore. It's one if you guys like have not seen this one, uh, you know, definitely check this one out. And like I said, really cool steelbook. The next ones here are both from um, these are both from you know uh, Dark Force Entertainment, and this is um, has a really cool uh, slip cover on this one. This is the Karen black film uh called mirror mirror and um the main actress in here is play you know who's a rainbow harvest who plays the uh, you know is the lead in the film she has like a real winona rider kind of look like kind of like winona rider and like um beetlejuice like the, her kind of like style and look and everything and this one is basically though about um this, um, you know, it's LaVonda Carter's character who is, like, moving out of her house, and she has this mirror. It's like a, you know, LaVonda Carter who's, you know, played, you know, Marilyn, you know, played Lily Munster in, you know, The Monsters. And lots and lots of stuff like American Gothic, that horror movie I always really liked, and lots of different things. But she has, like, kind of selling... Her, moving out of her house and she has this one like kind of cursed mirror and it kind of gets left behind and when the new family you know Karen Black and her daughter are going to look at the new house they're going to buy they see that mirror in there and she really wants it the daughter really wants this mirror and, and like you know she ends up getting it and, and buying it and putting it in her room and basically though this mirror is like cursed and like she's sort of staring into the mirror and she's seeing all these weird things and like you know blood is dripping down the mirror and all these sort of weird things it's basically sort of about out like um strange things that are going on from the mirror and the mirror has all these kind of powers and the mirror kind of starts to control her and kind of like making her act differently and all this kind of stuff it's like it's actually a really really cool movie i had never actually seen this movie before and i really really like this one if you guys have not seen this one definitely check this one out it's funny i had heard like the music from this movie like this one song that is like during like a prom scene but i never actually saw this movie but on here though it has a brand new hd master from the original 35 millimeter uncut negative and it's a really, really um, great transfer. They did a great job, you know, cleaning up the film. Also has reflections on Mirror, uh, you know, on Mirror Mirror, which is a featurette with the producer, producers by, um, you know, um, feature with the producers from cult director Damon Packard, you know, who did like things like Reflections of Evil and that kind of stuff. But really, really cool one here. And like I said, really like the slipcover. Also, though, they have um, Mirror Mirror 2 Raven Dance available as well on the Dark Force Entertainment website as well. And this is basically, though, 
set at like at this orphanage and it's dealing with like um kind of like nuns like not the stuff that happened with this mirror in the orphanage and kind of like um what's going on there and how this mirror is affecting the one girl at the orphanage and uh, mark ruffalo is in this movie this is one of his early movies and you know i actually thought this one was really cool as well uh not as not as interesting as the first movie but still really like this one they actually made um two other sequels as well i, I don't know if those ones uh hopefully those ones come out to blu-ray down the line as well but both both of them were really, really fun movies, but this one has on here as well a brand new HD master from the original uncut 35mm negative, and it also has a production company, uh, you know, Orphan Entertainment promo, as well as trailers on this one. And the next ones I got here are all from MovieZing.com, and I have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price, but this is uh, also from the Warner Archive, and this is Step by Step, the complete fifth season here. This is one of those shows, you know, that orig originally aired on, you know, uh, TGIF, and I remember, like, as a kid, you know, always watching TGIF, and it was, you know, Full House, Family Matter, Perfect Strangers, you know, Step by Step. But it was one of those things where it was back before, you know, there was DVR and that kind of stuff. You could set up VCRs, but I never did that really for too many things until like I was a little older. But like I always remember it was a big thing. You had to be home. You had to watch TGIF. You couldn't miss it. They didn't air it all the time or anything like that. There was no way to watch it later, like video on demand or any of that kind of stuff. It was kind of like you had to watch it then. And that was one of those big things that I always remember was, you know, watching TGIF. Let me know if you guys remember that as well like always watching that um, there's not really anything like that anymore it's not that same kind of thing anymore because since you tape everything and it's all DVR and demand it's not really the same way anymore but this of course you know stars you know Susan Summers and Patrick Duffy and it's basically about their characters you know the first season was how they were seeing each other and dating it was kind of their secret thing and their kids both their sets of kids did not know anything about this and they ended up getting married and then the kids you know they tell the kids about it they're both their kids their set of kids and kind of them all living together and the, the awkwardness and kind of like not knowing each other at all and the kind of things that they go through but it's a really really fun family comedy you know all kind of problems going on and everything but it's a really really fun show uh, the next one here is um, from a company called um, uh, from Indie Rights Movies and it's called Ring Ring and this stars uh, Kirby um, you know Kirby Bliss Blanton you know who was in um, you know Eli Roth's film Green Inferno and I like this movie a lot this also has in here uh, Lou Ferrigno and this is basically though Lou Ferrigno is the boss and it's about this company where they like it's kind of like a um can't, it's like a telemarketing kind of company where like they, they're all there kind of calling people would you like to do this would you like to save money with this and Lou Frigno is like the main boss and he has some funny scenes in here too like he has one thing in here of him like getting this big sub and like he even says like when he's like ordering his sub he's like oh don't put this on the sub I don't like that you don't want to get me angry you won't like me when I'm angry like a reference to the Hulk but I don't know I, th I thought that was fun but it's basically though the you know um Kirby Bliss's Blanton's character and Malcolm Goodwin, uh, you know, they basically come up with this idea though. Like they don't really like working there and they don't like working for Lou Frigno's character. And they think, you know, well, we could just do this. All we gotta do is get the contacts. So they kind of steal the contacts from, you know, their boss and they take it pictures on their phone because they can't figure out how to, you know, send it themselves any other way, so they take pictures with it. But the one character though is out the one night and he's like on like a lift kind of thing and he le loses the phone. So they both use a find my app kind of thing find my phone the app to find their phone and it's basically though it's this awkward thing because there's this Lyft driver who in the beginning of this movie you see him kind of weird he's doing weird things he's lurking at people driving around real strange but of course though um, you know you find out that the Lyft driver you know is the one it's the one that they get in the car of to try and track down the phone and like what they're looking on the app at the address and everything that guy who picks them up is that same guy he's the guy that took the phone and has the phone and it's like this whole big thing and it's kind of like what happens and that you know, that's not spoiling anything because it's like when they get to the house it's like this whole nightmare and it's like I really like this movie it's kind of like a comedy mixed into it as well and it's one of those movies too it's a real like short easy Easy watch it's only like 73 minutes long but I like this one a lot next one here is from uh, film rise this one's kind of hard to explain this is called Nighthawks this is basically about like this whole group of these like um kind of like um preppy kind of people that all go to this kind of club and they all kind of hang out together and everything and the one guy ends up going to he basically um 
he like kind of goes to the like this bar and then he gets like invited by the friend to go to this club but it's like it, at this kind of club that, that he's invited to go to it's kind of like you have to do certain things and there's kind of weird things going on and the club and like the look of it kind of has like a vibe of like um like with the look and the way it's like designed like an eyes wide shut kind of like feel to it but it's basically though this group of people that he gets involved with are not good and it's kind of like he's kind of finds himself stuck in this thing kind of dealing with it and trying to sort of figure out exactly what he's going to do that it's like i said it's kind of hard to explain but it was definitely an interesting movie like this one is called nighthawks this one here is from uh, Sony, and this is the 20th anniversary of Jawbreaker. This is a movie I've always absolutely loved this movie. There's also the director of this movie, Darren Stein. There's a documentary on him that, that, that was from um, called Put the Camera on Me, which is a like, really great like f documentary on filmmaking and everything, and about because he started out making films as a kid and like a teenager and everything, and it was a documentary on him. But, so if you guys are a fan of this movie, check out that documentary, though. Like I said, it's called uh, Put, the, I believe it's Put the Camera on Me, and I always really like that documentary. And I, I saw that, you know, um, after I saw this movie. But this is basically, though, um, it kind of has the vibe of, like, Heathers. That It has that kind of um, a feel to it. Uh, if you guys like Heathers, it's like that vibe to it. But it's basically, though, about, you know, Rebecca Gayhart, Rose McGowan, and Julia Benz characters who are the real popular girls at the school. And they end up pulling this prank on their one friend, and they put a jawbreaker in her mouth, and they, you know... Um, tie her up and put her in the back of their trunk. But she ends up dying. And, um... The one friend, you know, um, you know, Fern Meadows, who's kind of like played by Judy Greer, who's like the um, kind of like the not popular girl at school, though. She ends up finding out about this and seeing the body and all this kind of stuff and discovers what it, they've done. And, they, you know, she's going to go to the cops and they say, oh, well, you know, we can make you like us. We can make you popular, but you can't tell. And it's kind of like about them, like giving her a makeover and um, all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, she they, they like you know, have plans of what they want to do. And it's like, you know, uh, Rose McGowan's character in here plays this really, like, terrible, like, all the only things about herself. But I really love this movie. And this has on here, though, the 20th anniversary director and cast commentary track on here. It has also has the archival director's commentary as well. But it's really cool, brand new commentary on here with a number of the cast on here back together with the director talking about the film, which is really cool, brand new feature on this one. The next one here is from Sony as well. And this is from the um, Sony Pictures Classic line. This is a movie that stars um, you know, Julianne Moore, Michelle Williams, and Billy Crudup. Crudup. Um, this is uh, After the Wedding. This is about a Michelle Williams character who is lives in... Where was, where was the area that she was? I think it was in... Um, I can't remember which country she was in. I think it was it might have been Thailand. I can't remember where it was, but she was basically there and it was um they need more donations to help the the children there and um they send her to go because um Julian Moore's character is this woman who's like you know has given to them before and they you know like a beneficiary to the the the, the group where um you know Michelle Williams character lives and works and you know she's going there to kind of talk to her to kind of you know basically collect this check that they really need this is going to be this really really big check but um you know when Michelle Williams character gets there though Julianne Moore's character is you know um in the middle of you know planning her daughter's wedding and it's kind of a really like awkward time she's dealing with all this stuff she doesn't can't really commit so she's like not committing to the check and michelle williams thinks she's going to be able to be there really quick and leave because she has like you find out more and more about what's going on about reasons why she left america and doesn't want to be there but when she gets there though she finds out though that you know um, julian moore's husband though she has some kind of a connection to him and i don't want to say anything more but it's like it becomes this big thing but i thought this is a really really well acted character piece here and this has a making of on this one the next one here is from Sony as well, and this is a um, the the Cobra Kai seasons one and two here, and this has in here though a um, a, a headband which is included with this. So it's a double sided uh, you know headband, so it has two different um, you know the, the headbands on this one. So this is a really cool thing that is included. It's a really really high quality headband in this one. But this, you know, is a, a show that was originally, you know, you could originally see this one on, uh, you know, on YouTube. I think it's on the YouTube, um, like, streaming kind of thing they have, like YouTube Originals. And this is a follow-up to, the, you know, the Karate Kid, you know, um, how many years? Like, 30 years after the original, um, you know, the events of the original film. 
it's basically though with um you know Ralph Macho's character and the character who was you know um you know uh what was the name of the character who was the um you know Joey Lawrence you know you know who was like his um you know the you know his nemesis in the original film because they were both battling together and it's you know uh the one character now though he's it's kind of him you know kind of working like a regular kind of thing and having financial problems and he's seeing you know you know uh you know Ralph Macho's character and he's like has this really you know um, thriving car dealership and he has like it's a number of different locations is doing so well and it's like he ends up the one guy's car ends up getting you know messed up so he ends up having having to go there to pick it up because it was towed away because it was like because of what happened to it, it was got hit by these girls and it's like a whole big thing though but basically though he goes and they base, basically see each other for the first time in all these years and it kind of brings back all these old memories and he ends up deciding though you know um you know Johnny Lawrence's character ends up deciding that he wants to go and do something again with himself big and he ends up opening up this um karate school because if he helps this one kid and it's kind of like it brings back the whole rivalry to both of them again this is actually a really really good show it has on here though lots of different features it has like fight choreography feature right in here uh, it has on here bonus scenes gag reel uh, cast chemistry reads it has um some featurettes on here music performances at the whiskey a go-go uh you know so lots and lots of features on this one but one of these shows i would definitely recommend you guys check out i really like this one a lot and the next one i got here is from sony as well it's a movie here called cross rise of the villains i believe this is the third film in the series and this stars brian austin green Vinny Jones, Danny Trejo, uh, you know, Tom Sizemore's in here. This is kind of like, um, it's a little hard to explain, but it's kind of like a, um, basically about these, um, Brian Austin Green's character, and they have like these, these amulets that they're wearing, and they, um, kind of gives them superpower so it's like these you know sort of superheroes that are kind of trying to defend from the super villains that are trying to like destroy the city and everything it's like them all working together to try and destroy them and to get these amulets back and these crystals and that kind of stuff it's like i said it's it's done kind of in like a it has like a comic book kind of style and feel to it sort of i guess you would relate it a little bit to like a sin city kind of feel to this one like i said this one here is called cross rise of the villains uh the next one here is from the Criterion Collection. This is a movie here uh, from 1996 called The Day Trippers. And this is the director who went on to do um, Super Bad and a number of different movies, uh, Greg Motala. And this is basically, though, about. Um, the one character, you know, she believes that her husband, played by Stanley uh, Tucci, she comes to believe that she thinks, you know, that he's been, you know, cheating on her. And, you know, he, you know, she goes to tell her parents about this. And it's kind of about them all going together on the road to try and, you know, go to the husband's work and kind of confront him. So it's like she's going to go in there and then like it's kind of becomes all these kind of problems like the husband's not there. They're trying to find him. They're trying to figure out exactly where he is. And they're trying to figure out like if there is any truth to you know the fact that you know that the Stanley you know Tucci's character is cheating on his wife and it's just kind of like this family drama of them all together and there's like these funny scenes in the car and all these kind of things I don't know I thought this is a fun movie and it's you know uh, Liv Schreiber is in this one as well as Parker Posey this has on here though a brand new 4k uh, digital restoration on here has on here though a new Conte track on here with the director and editor and producer on here you know it's produced by Steven Soddenberg uh, it has on here though uh, new interviews on here with uh, Liv Schreiber, Parker Posey, Cameron Scott. Also has on here a short film from 1985 from the director. I'll show you guys a look inside as well. It also has a booklet. This has some pictures and stuff about the production and the cast and all that kind of stuff as well. And this one and it folds out like this as well. But like, a print, like I said, this is one of those movies I had never seen before. It was definitely an interesting film. Uh, the next one here is a um, UK release. This is from a company called trying to figure out the name of this company. I think it's called Entertainment in Video. I have a link, though, to their website. But now keep in mind, though, this one is Region B Lock. So you guys would have to have an all-region Blu-ray player to play this one. But this is uh, one I was really excited to have a physical release of this one. And this is Midsommar, the director's cut here, which is, I think it's, a, I believe it's about... 30 minutes longer, I believe, this cut of the film. And it kind of focuses much more on the backstory to, you know, um, uh, you know Florence Pogue's characters with her boyfriend, and you find out more about this, and also more about their the 
the paper that the characters are writing, the boyfriend and the one character is writing for school. There's more subject on that. A number of different things are expanded upon, but it's really cool to have a physical release of this one. But if this character, if you haven't seen this one, is basically about Florence Pope's character who goes to, um, you know, to Sweden with her uh, boyfriend and his friends. And it, it was like an awkward thing because in the beginning of this movie, something happened to her character's parents and she's really depressed. And because of this, though, uh, the boyfriend was just getting ready to break up with her, but he can't because of what had happened. He would feel horrible about this. And he was originally going to go on this trip with his friends without her. It was going to be kind of his breaking away. But he ends up inviting her to come along. And it's kind of like um, when they get there, because it's the one friend who was like from Sweden. He's taking him back to see his family and everything. And it's kind of like this weird group of the, of the family there and, and, and all the friends, the people who live in this commune kind of village. And you know something weird is going on. They're planning something. It's got a real like Wicker Man kind of vibe, you know, to the original Wicker Man, but really, really great movie. If you guys have not seen this one, and like I said, really glad to have a, you know, uh, director's cut release of this one. And the next one here is from Mill Creek. And this is a movie that stars Hulk Hogan. Uh, Clint Howard is in this movie. Uh, Adam Wiley. It's, I think this is one of Mila Kunis's first films. Mila Kunis is in this movie, as well as um, Ed Bigley Jr. And this is called Santa with Muscles. And I, 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 this is one of those movies I saw as a kid and had not seen this movie in years. And this one is basically though about Hulk Hogan's character. And he's like this guy who's really rich and has all this money. And in the beginning of the movie, he's kind of like doing these weird trainings with his friends and the people that work with him. And he's like messing around and racing in these cars and going real fast. And the cops are coming after him. And he ends up escaping and hiding out in the mall. And he puts on this Santa suit. And, it's, and, and Clint Howard's character plays one of the cops. He, he was just like trying to track him down, but he ends up hiding out in the mall as Santa Claus. And then, then though, he ends up bumping his head and forgetting who he is and thinking he is Santa Claus and he remembers nothing about himself. And he ends up going to this orphanage to help the orphans there. And it's just like a really, really fun movie because like the orphanage is going to try and get bought out by these people. They're trying to kick them out to take the land. Ed Bigley Jr.'s character is trying to do that. I like this movie. This, like I said, I, this is one of those movies I saw as a kid and had not seen this movie in years and years and years looks great here on blu-ray really glad that you know mill creek put this one out the next one here and this one i think this is from um elf on a shelf and i think this one is in some stores like kohl's and a couple things where you guys can get this one in person this is um elf pets a fairy a uh, fox club's christmas tale and this one is um this one is definitely more for kids, but it did have really, really good music. And one of the music in here was like a kind of like this folk song, that kind of like an Irish kind of folk kind of song. It was kind of making me think of Felicia's Journey a little bit. I don't know why, but it kind of had that kind of vibe. But this is basically though about the uh, the you know the um, foxes that kind of like what have the you know, the northern lights and like kind of like the foxes, you know, the tail of the foxes that light up the northern lights. This is focusing, though, on this um, this uh, kid whose mother is away at war and he really hopes she comes home, but it doesn't look like she's going to be able to get back. And like her, you know, his wish to Santa is, you know, that, you know, his, you know, his mother will come back. And, um, that's basically what it is, is like, you know, the um, the Elf on the Shelf characters who are like these, the, you know, basically the elf, the, the things that you actually can buy in real life, the Elf on the Shelf characters, and they're on like in Santa, you know, Santa land helping Santa, you know, North Pole helping Santa. I don't know, I, I actually honestly thought this was fun. I watched this and thought this was a fun movie. It has on here, though, a commentary track on here, a sing-along version, as well as a making of, like about, you know, the producers and everything talking about this and how the one character who played the grandmother was actually their real grandmother, one's real grandmother. I don't know. I, I, I thought this was actually fun. It's definitely more for kids, but I actually think, you know, kids will really like that. The next ones here are, are from um, MVD, and this is uh, from Global Digital Releasing. And this is a movie here called uh, Prepper. This this was a fun movie. I like this one because it had some comedy in it and then like some like heavy subject matter as well. But it's about this guy who's a teacher and he ends up, you know, Little by little, he starts getting kind of paranoid and worried about what's going on in the world. And there's some sicknesses going around. And he, like, starts thinking more and more about, like, having an underground bunker and about preparing for what could happen and getting, like, um, collecting food and all these kind of things. My favorite stuff in the movie, though, was his character in the high school that he was teaching. There was, like, um, some, like this, this, like, these kind of funny scenes in the school. And, like, um, it was funny. Like, they all had, like, these chairs they were sitting in. But then there was, like, some beanbags some of the characters were sitting on. And I'm thinking... 
don't know if in high schools they have bean bags on the ground that like people use as a desk. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. Not that I ever remember anything like that. But basically, though, he's like, you know, little by little starts getting more obsessed about this and he starts going to places and learning about karate and learning about bunkers and all these kind of things. But it's kind of le leading up to something is going on. That's kind of what it is. But I like this movie. I honestly thought this was, you know, really well acted and everything. But I like this one a lot. And the next one here is from Terror Films. And this one, I'll just cover this up just so no one says anything. There's nothing bad on here, but just so there's no, like, confusion. But it's a movie here called Flesh Blanket, which is one, I like this one a lot. This is basically, though, about doing a, these group of people that are all comedians coming together to do a documentary. And this is like a found footage kind of horror movie done to seem real, but they're doing a documentary on Lenny Bruce and about comedians coming together about, like, you know, because Lenny Bruce was, like, one of the early shocking comedians, and they're all kind of coming together to do a tribute to Lenny Bruce where he was going to perform at the same place, which has now been torn down and turned into this bar, but they're all going to come together there and do this documentary and then like do a movie about it as well but it's basically they're focusing on the one comedian there who is like the you know kind of like the head one the headliner there and like he's acting really strange he's actually seems really weird and like when they get there though he starts cracking up more and more and he starts talking to some of the girls there and says oh want to follow me to the court out, out there and i'll tell you what i think about you and tell you how i like you and all these things and he basically though takes people out there and like strangles them and kills them in these crazy ways and it's kind of like all this is going on at the same time they're doing like this comedy show and they don't know this is happening and it's just this intense build up and like I thought this was great I thought, you know, um, Kato Kalin is in here as one of the comedians there's lots of comedians that pop up in here but really, really interesting movie. And the next ones here are both from Wild Eye Releasings. And this one here is called Dark Slide. This is about a group of people who do like um, extreme skateboarding and that kind of stuff. And they do surfing. And they they do like kind of like um, they film the, the surfing and the skateboarding. They make skateboard kind of videos and everything. And they're all together going together, you know, working on their one movie. And they're kind of skateboarding in the um, L.A. River kind of area. And they end up like falling down into this like ravine, like hole in the ground that opened up. And they fall down down in there and they find themselves trapped it's basically though about something that's down there it kind of has like a a descent kind of vibe to it and it, it's kind of like you know that that's what it is and they find themselves trapped down there and they're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get out and what they're going to do i actually thought this was a pretty cool movie it has on here though a music video as well as our uh, trailers on this one this one is also here from wild eye releasing it's called uh, southern chillers this is an anthology horror movie and this is dealing with like um serial killers and it's basically focusing on like two serial killers about like um some of their the, the people that you know kind of the tales of of their killings and that kind of a thing and it's all you know um you know different um you know directors that directed the segments on there i think it's three different directors that did the segments on the on these ones but if you guys are fans of anthologies this was a pretty cool one like i said dealing with serial killer kind of segments this has on here though a commentary track uh bloopers and then behind the scenes on this one uh this one here is from um monarch home entertainment and it's a movie here called a snow white christmas and this was like a, you know the, the the snow white story but done like modernized and it's about like snow white's character whose father he recently died and her stepmother is kind of planning on trying to like take over the, the business and kind of get all of her money and everything and it's basically though they find this you know because they, they need her to sign something and she, they know she won't so they basically come up with this idea of having her hypnotized so she ends up, you know, um, forgetting who she is and forgetting all this kind of stuff and doesn't know who she is or has she has this money or any of this kind of stuff. So they want to take over the company. And then it's kind of her waking up with characters that are supposed to be like the Seven Dwarfs kind of characters. And it, it, that, and it's kind of like her trying to remember who she is and everything. But I thought this is a fun, you know, uh, Christmas like family holiday film here. And then the last ones here are all from um, MVD. And these ones are from the... Um, the first three are from the Marquee Collection. These are ones that just one that you guys know are available. And this is a double feature here with two films uh, with starring Sylvester Stallone. This has uh, I See You and Reach Me here. And like I said, these are these are from the Marquee Collection. As well as another film here with uh, Sylvester Stallone here called Shade. 
And this one has on here feature wise, has a Conte track on here with the um, writer and director, has a making of on here. It has on here, though, um, interviews with cast and crew with the director of Stars Sylvester Stallone, Melanie Griffith, Jamie Foxx. Really great cast on this one. Theatrical trailer, as well as this is from the MVD Marquee Collection as well. And this is a guide to recognizing your saints. This has another great cast as well. It has Robert Downey Jr., Shia, Shia LaBeouf, Diane Weist, Channon Tatum, Rosario Dawson. And this one has on here, though, a commentary track on here. It has a make of on this one 11 deleted scenes with optional commentary track on here uh, alternate opening alternate ending uh, as well as some auditions on here and theatrical trailer and the last one here is from MVD and this is a documentary here on um, the last 72 hours of Leonard Skinner and this is um, the documentary called I'll Never Forget You this one has on here a um, bonus materials as a 40th anniversary event in Jacksonville Florida as well as a music video on this one as well like I said just want you guys to know that these ones were available from uh, MVD but anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.